this week's our tutorial for ecological forecasting, we're going to start playing with time series data. And over the next few weeks, we're going to explore some of the different issues that can arise with time series data and some of the different properties that time series data might have. The property that we're going to focus on for this week is time scales. Time series data often has different time scales embedded with it. And we're going to learn a technique called time series decomposition, which will help us disentangle these scales to see the dynamics that are occurring at different levels in our data. As ecologists, many of us are familiar with the concept of scales in ecology. There's the biological scales of organization, cells embedded within individuals, individuals within populations, populations within communities, communities within ecosystems. The properties of these scales of different scales of organization can be really different. These same concepts apply to temporal data, where there are often different levels of dynamics that are embedded in the data that have been collected over time. To understand that better, let's uh, draw on the whiteboard a hypothetical time series to see what those, spatial, those temporal scales might look like. So let's say we have a time series that we've been collecting for some period of time. Draw my axes here put time on the x-axis and whatever value it is that we've been recording over time on the y. And we have an observation that represents some period of time, and we'll call this t for the time being. And this is a single observation. And then we make another observation, and then another observation. And now I'm going to fill in this time series with all of these observations that we've made over time. If we look at this time series, one way to think about it is a series of monthly observations. But when you string all of these individual observations together, you start to get time scale dynamics that emerge at longer time scales. Not only is this time series a time series of monthly observations. You could also think of it as a series of seasonal observations. So say this is our summer season and this is our winter season. So that's another time scale that's actually embedded in our time series, even though we were only intent on collecting data at a monthly scale, and that was our sole focus. What emerges then is the seasonal signal. On top of that, on top of that, we also have dynamics occurring at longer time scales. And so if we do across all of this, we have a year. And if we had managed to continue our data collection, we would have more than one year. And the longer these data collections go, the more these time scales will start to pop out of the data. Within any time series that we collect, there will be these different time scales that emerge. There'll be the smallest time scale, which is the, the scale of the individual data points that we're collecting, day, hour, monthly, yearly. And then there will be scales that occur at longer time spans as those observations continue to accrue. And so understanding these different time scales and the dynamics that occur at these different time scales might be really important. To see this, let's go look at a very famous time series graph and examine the different time scales that it exhibits um, in its dynamics. So this graph is a very famous time series graph and it represents the mean monthly carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere as it's been measured at Mauna Loa since 1958. On our y-axis here is that CO2 measurement and the x-axis is time. And each one of these red dots, which you can see, represents the mean monthly CO2 concentration, December, January, February, and so on. Our eye is drawn to this dramatic increase over the years in CO2. That is the dominant structure in this data, but there's another time scale of dynamic that is also embedded in this data. And you can see it in this very regular squiggle that is occurring around that blue line. And that blue line represents uh, an average or a running mean of this underlying mean monthly data. But the mean monthly data itself is not smooth. It has this wiggle. And this wiggle represents a seasonal dynamic that is occurring 
in the flux of CO2 in the atmosphere, with increases in CO2 occurring uh, through the spring and into the early summer, and then drawdowns in CO2 occurring through uh, the late summer and into the fall. These seasonal dynamics are not all that relevant for questions about how atmospheric CO2 has been uh, increasing or changing over the past few decades. But there are questions where this understanding, this, this drawdown, this uptake and release of CO2 on a seasonal level might be very relevant, in which case this general increase over time is more of a distraction than, than helpful in answering your question. And so this is an example of where it might be useful, depending upon your question, to focus on one time scale of the data or another. One of the ways we can do this is through something called time series decomposition. Now, time series decomposition is a branch of time series analysis that seeks to extract these different levels of, of dynamics in your data. Whatever approach you take, it tends to have three very distinct steps. The first step is to isolate the long-term trend. And that's what this blue line here on the CO2 graph is illustrating. An attempt to pull out that trend that is occurring across the broad expanse of data points. In this case, that trend is a linear increasing trend, but it doesn't always have to be so. It could be nonlinear, it could be cyclical. There's a variety of different ways that this long-term signal may be extracted. It's often done through some sort of a running average. Once a long-term trend is fit to the data, that trend is then removed from the data by calculating the residuals of every data point from whatever long-term trend was calculated. Those residuals are then used for the second part of the analysis, which is to calculate the seasonal signal. And that's what this inset up here for the seasonal variation is illustrating. This average distance of each month from that long-term mean. Once the seasonal signal is extracted, it too can be fit, usually with some sort of cyclical dynamic. And then the residuals from that analysis create our third component. These residuals that are left over after the seasonal signal are often referred to as the irregular fluctuations or the residual variation in the time series. This is the variation in the data that can't be explained by that long-term movement in the data, nor can it be explained by the seasonal fluctuations. So we've talked more than enough about time series decomposition kind of in this abstract way. Let's go in, into R and start to play with some data and see how we can make R extract these levels for us and the different ways that we can make it do this and the types of information that that can yield for us.